Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. Behind me here is my kitchen garden. I need to plant some blueberries, move a couple of gooseberries, mulch around some of the food plants and I also want to gather up some herbs for preserving while they're still growing well. These three blueberries in pots I actually brought with me when I moved from Melbourne. So they've been in these pots for, I don't know, six or seven years. Now, I haven't always been great at growing plants in pots. I tend to forget to water them. And like this little plant here, I hope will survive. I did forget to water it and we've had a really dry summer. So I think it's about time to get these plants into the ground. I'm just giving them a bit of a water so that they're ready to transplant. I already have three blueberries in this garden and these are just growing really well. There's been no moisture issue for these guys. I'm going to leave a link to a kitchen garden video in which I cleared this whole area and highlighted the little mini swale that runs through here from the driveway. So what I want to do is be able to plant my blueberries through here so that they will benefit from that watering that comes through the little swale. First of all though, I've got to clear some space so that I can plant them, although I'm going to try and leave as much borage as I can because with winter coming there's not a lot left for the bees and they're all over these plants currently so I don't want to take too much away from them. So I'm going to just sort of trim a little bit of this and hopefully the plants will be happy enough with that and not fall over. I'm just going to move all of these plants out the way for the moment. Drag these strawberry plants out and move them on. Should really pot all these up and give them away at my permaculture group. So I'll leave them aside for that. Now I've trimmed that little borage a little bit and I should be able to, the, the mini swale comes through just right there. So I should be able to fit in one, two, and then three. I let a little icicle radish go to seed in this area and I'm forever getting little icicle radishes. This is one of those radishes that grew huge. I'm just going to leave that in the ground to rot down and feed the soil. It goes down quite a fair way. I am going to pull out these creeping buttercup plants because they spread and their roots are just in the wood chip layer and pull out fairly easily. Here's a couple more radishes that I'm just going to remove. I'll try and remove them right at ground level. Yep. And that leaves all of that to rot down in the ground and feed the soil organisms. This lot I'll probably throw off to the chickens. I've just got to clear the, the wood chips, pull that away. All right, well that's fairly clear of wood chip. Now I'll get a bit more of a hole dug. I've just grabbed the cardboard so I can put this soil onto it. Just to make sure it stays clear, I want to reduce the chance that the wood chips mixes with the soil. Now I'm not going to dig in too deep. I think I'm happy enough with that. Now the next part is to get these plants that have been in these pots for some time out of the pot. So I'm just going to lie them on the side and see if I can just pull it out. Okay, well that wasn't so hard. I just need to work out how far down the roots go because I might need to dig a, a deeper hole than what I had anticipated. Although I suppose I could just halve that root ball and prune some of this plant down. I'll just bring it over and we'll see how it looks. It's probably a bit too high and this plant is a lot bigger out of that pot than you, what you reckon. What I might do is just cut off the bottom of this plant. Do 
still got to go down a bit. I will prune some of this plant as well, just to allow for the smaller root system. I think that's a lot better. So I'm just going to bury it in there now. It's still a little bit higher than the surrounding soil. So I'm going to add in some mushroom compost. Okay, that's one plant in. Now let's get the other two done. I'm just going to get this mulch off the top and I'll re-mulch it when we get it into the ground. But it just helps you be able to see where the top of your plant is and what you've got to keep above your soil level. Now I'll just get this soil back in around the plant. Just trying to make sure these wood chips aren't filling up the hole first though. I'll be giving them a water once I've got all three into the ground. I think that one might have to go in a bit deeper. compost okay now we can get them watered in all that's left to do now is give them some mulch I'm not going to move all these wood chip back on what I prefer to mulch them with is some pine needles because I think it just helps create a more acidic soil and that's what these plants like to grow in. I gather my pine needles from a stand of pine trees not far from my home. There's always plenty lying around here. There was one more thing I was going to do and that's just a little bit of a, a trim with these plants. I'll get rid of some of the, the dead wood. I'll keep an eye on them and make sure they're travelling okay but hopefully they'll be happier with a bit more water in these new homes. It's the next day and I'm back out here in the garden. This area has really overgrown and I need to trim some of the plants back and use that to mulch around my food plants. And I also need to find the gooseberries because they're buried in there somewhere and I'm going to have to dig them out and move them. First up, I'm going to just clear this path so I can access these herbs again. In this area here that I harvest lots of my greens for use in my breakfasts each morning, especially during winter when I don't want to go too far. I've got some celery here also and some the Swiss chard and I've got heaps of borage which the bees are loving but it's really not giving any space to these plants that I really need to be here. So I'm going to trim some of these off. There's still plenty of borage in other areas of the garden, but I'm going to give little plants like these ones here just a bit more room. So I'll be mulching around these and just chopping back these small weeds and giving 
plants like this little kale here, a bit more light. And with these plants, I'll just chop them up small and use it as the mulch around these food plants. So I haven't taken out all the borage. I've trimmed some little branches that come off some of these big shoots just to give you know these little plants a bit more space and it's certainly got a bit more chance to reach the light. So in here I've got a kale plant that it's a bit buried once again. So I'll trim these plants around it. I just even trim some of my Swiss chard plants and I can use that. I've got lots so I don't mind mulching with some of it. I do feed a lot of my Swiss chard to the chickens. Oh this can go. Okay you can see it a little bit there but I might still take a couple of these branches off this one next to it. Okay there we go. The gooseberry that I want to move is buried in here so I'm just going to clear an area around it and I might even trim it to make it easier to move. I think I'll try and leave the borage around because I haven't, I'm not going to plant anything else in its spot just at the moment. I've got that base clear enough so I'm just going to go and grab my fork and see if I can get that out of the ground. Well that's out of the ground. I've got quite a sufficient root ball there and I've also pulled out a second plant. It might be the one that I was going to dig out anyway but I'll be able to just trim that there and that's my second gooseberry plant. What I'll also do, these are really quite long. I'm going to trim them and then I'll put those into water and we should shoot and that'll propagate some more plants. Actually just having a look in the garden, this is the other gooseberry that I knew had rooted. So I'll dig that one up as well and that'll make three gooseberry plants we're transferring. There we go, that's the root system on this plant. So that will transplant really easily. I'm just gonna trim this plant and we'll put that into the ground as well. There's a few more Swiss chard in here that I will mulch around and I have got some flat leaf parsley hiding in here and just over the back there which I'm going to really mulch around well because I don't have too much parsley in this area at the moment so I really want to protect those plants. And that's three of my little parsley plants all mulched and given a better chance to thrive. Now with these little plants all looked after, let's go and get those gooseberries in the ground. I thought we could probably clear a little bit of this weedy mess and get the gooseberries settled in here. This here is the remains of some evening primrose. Actually you can see there's still some little yellow flowers on this one but it's basically finished so I'm going to cut that down. It has already spread its seeds around so there'll be more evening primrose next season. So I'm just going to move that on. Alright time to get the sickle working. Now I don't know if you can make it out but right through here there's a, a bit of a, a berm but then it drops into my mini swale. So having the gooseberries on this side on the, the berm means that the water that comes in off the driveway 
will come through this little channel here and hydrate that area really well. So this is a perfect spot for these gooseberries. Just positioning first and checking. That's my blueberries over there. So this should be far enough away so it's not impacting those. And I'll just put these two smaller ones sort of here and here so that I've still got some space around the, the boysenberry. This top layer is quite a bit of compost, so I'll scrape that off first. All right, that nearly fits. I'm just gonna trim these roots down a little bit more. These plants wanna grow, so I don't think it's gonna hurt it at all. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna bury it again. Just got to bring in some wood chips and finish with some water. While I'm out in the garden today, I thought I might just harvest some of the herbs that are growing really well before they start to slow down for winter. Usually when I come out to get sage, it looks pretty ordinary. So it's finally really kicked in this season. So I'm certainly going to preserve it. That should be plenty, I think, for my recipes, but I can always pop out to grab a bit more if not. In this area here, I have the Vietnamese mint, which I don't use too much of, but right next to it here is lemon balm, which I dry and use in tea. So I'm going to gather some of that. Sometimes I harvest herbs just so that I can clear the path and that's often the case with this oregano. I often use oregano in my recipes when I'm preserving like tomatoes or um, any of the summer veg really. So I like to have a lot of the dried oregano on hand. The oregano has these beautiful little flowers and I have cut a little posy of those before and it's lasted really well in a dried flower arrangement. So I've got my path cleared now and I've barely made an impact on my oregano in this bed. So I've got my three herbs. I'm basically just gonna bundle that up and hang that up. It's too much to put in my dehydrator and it will dry well. I'm also just gonna hang that one up with my sage, however, I'm going to dry most of the leaves in my dehydrator because I want to use it for some recipes. 